When we create dashboards in Microsoft Excel, we usually use slicers and timelines to provide some interactive control. If we want to see data from just one country or just one time period of a given year, we can use them to show us that particular batch or subset of data. But if we really want to use the dashboard capability to its best effect, we need to connect all the controls, the slicers and timelines, to all the charts and visuals. This can be a bit tricky, but there is a recipe for it. Here, we've cheated and uh, already set up the elements of a dashboard in an Excel workbook. You can see, among other things, we have three pivot charts. We have a clustered column, clustered bar, and a line chart. Uh, we have a timeline for time-related filtering down here at the bottom center, and a slicer to check data for one or more countries. Now, if we ask to filter the timeline for a particular period of time, say August of 2006, the one clustered column chart updates. If we clear the timeline and go over to the slicer and filter for one or two countries, say Denmark and maybe Sweden, and later unfilter, the bar chart reacts, but the other charts don't because each chart is initially connected to only one filter. So the trick is to know the procedure for cross-wiring the filters to every chart and thereby allow each filter to affect all the charts. Sometimes there's another step involved as well, but we'll walk through the whole sequence here. First, we need to make sure the program rechecks the data source for all the pivot charts so the slicers and timelines know to talk to them. So we have to go to each pivot table and reconfirm or reconnect to the data source. And click on the first tab here for money by country, click in the pivot table, go to the pivot table analyze tab in the ribbon, and then tell it we want to change or more accurately reconfirm the data source. It should be the worksheet called big orders, which is fine, just click OK here and then do the same for each of the other pivot tables. We go to the tab for freight by country, make sure we click somewhere in that pivot table. Again, pivot table analyze tab, change data source once again, and just reconfirm by clicking OK. It's very simple, but we have to go through each one at least once. We only have to do each one one time, but we have to do each table separately. So again, select the third pivot table, change source, click OK. Then, back on the dashboard, we select each of our filtering devices, in this case the one timeline and the one slicer, and tell it we want to make sure it's connected to all the pivot charts which were derived from the pivot tables. Having clicked on the timeline down here, I can now go to the timeline tab in the ribbon and over here on the left, the button we want is called Report Connections. Give it a click, and now we see that each of the pivot tables is listed in the dialog box. We can even make the dialog box a bit taller if we want. And now we just make sure we check all the check marks for the timeline in this case. Click OK, and do the same for the slicer. Click on the slicer. Go up to the tab for the slicer in the ribbon, give that a click. Again, slide over and click on Report Connections. And again, if we wish, make the box a bit taller, but make sure that we now check all the check boxes, which connect to the pivot tables, which in turn connect to the pivot charts on the dashboard we see here, and click OK once more. And now, if we try filtering either on the slicer or the timeline, click on the same uh, period of time for order date, we see that all three pivot charts are reacting. Unfilter on that, select whichever countries once again on our slicer, and again, all three pivot charts will react. They are now all connected. In this example, we've kept the layout a little abstract. Working with real-life data might be a trifle more in terms of setup, but the recipe of rechecking the pivot table sources and connecting the filters would work exactly the same. And this gives a dashboard much more flexibility.